Welcome to this educational breathing pattern film, which is designed to help you understand more about normal breathing and why you may be feeling more breathless following an infection with COVID-19. We will give you strategies to help improve your breathing pattern to reduce your symptoms of breathlessness and irritable cough, as well as guidance on how to return to activity and exercise. We will also provide you with tools to help clear your chest of secretions if this is a symptom that you are experiencing. So what is a breathing pattern disorder? Breathing is essential to life and occurs naturally with very little or no thought. Our lungs are unique organs because we continue to breathe without needing to think about it, but we can also override our automatic breathing pattern and change how we breathe. And this override can happen deliberately or without realising it. There are two types of breathing pattern disorder, hyperventilation or overbreathing and dysfunctional breathing. Normal respiratory rate is around 8 to 14 breaths a minute and normal tidal volume, the amount we breathe in with every breath, is a lot less than you might imagine, around 500 mil for an average adult which is only about 10% of your full lung capacity. When we breathe in, we take in oxygen, and when we breathe out, we expire or breathe out carbon dioxide. Having an optimal breathing pattern is very important for our general health, and changes to our breathing pattern can lead us to develop a number of symptoms. Hyperventilation occurs when we breathe more than our body needs. We often breathe more rapidly in times of stress, such as before an exam or a job interview, or if we need to take fast action in response to danger. We may notice that our heart beats more quickly as well, or we experience tingling in our fingers. If we have had a COVID infection, this may have caused us to breathe more quickly as part of our body's normal response to an infection. Normally, once the stressful situation or infection is over, our breathing returns to normal. However, for some people, this fast breathing continues and becomes the body's new normal. Dysfunctional breathing occurs when we breathe more rapidly through the mouth instead of the nose and breathe with the upper chest instead of the diaphragm. We may also carry tension in the shoulders, which can cause pain and discomfort. Dysfunctional breathing can also have many different causes or triggers, such as a response to physical exertion, cold weather, stress, strong smells, an infection or a blocked nose. These triggers are different for everyone and vary over time. It could also be due to holding your tummy in or wearing clothing that restricts expansion at the bases of your lungs. We might also notice that we hold our breath during certain activities, such as climbing the stairs, or when we are concentrating. The symptoms caused by dysfunctional breathing are similar to hyperventilation and some people may have elements of both breathing patterns. Changes to a normal breathing pattern can lead to a stress response within the body. The stress or fight or flight response is an appropriate reaction in the body to a stimulus as it prepares the body for action by raising our heart rate and breathing rate and gives us an extra shot of adrenaline. When the stimulus is no longer present, everything should return to normal. It is when the breathing pattern doesn't return to a normal speed, rhythm and depth once the stimulus has passed that it can be a problem. The stimulus may only be short or it could be prolonged or repeated. Often, the changes to our breath that occur with breathing pattern disorders are subtle and we may not notice that a change has happened until we start to experience symptoms or side effects. When our breathing pattern changes, it can feel unpleasant and we may experience feelings of breathlessness which are out of proportion to the activity that we are doing. As some of the symptoms of breathing pattern disorders can feel worrying, this can make us feel anxious. This anxiety may then further stimulate the abnormal breathing pattern and it can become a vicious cycle. When we breathe in, we take in oxygen and a small amount of carbon dioxide. When we breathe out, this air has less oxygen as the body has used some of the oxygen for our body's normal processes. These processes can also create carbon dioxide and so the air that we exhale contains a higher proportion of carbon dioxide than the air we breathe in. 
However, carbon dioxide is not simply a waste gas, and it plays an important role in many of the body's processes as well. What happens when we breathe too much, hyperventilate or overbreathe? When we hyperventilate, our breathing becomes faster or deeper or both. This means that we breathe out extra carbon dioxide, so less is available inside the body. Our body's natural response to low levels of carbon dioxide is to produce hormones like adrenaline to prepare the body for action by increasing heart rate and breathing rate. If hyperventilation becomes more permanent, it can cause reduced carbon dioxide inside the blood. The brain starts to adapt and recognise lower carbon dioxide levels as normal. This reinforces the need to breathe quickly to maintain these low levels of carbon dioxide. As a result of this new breathing habit, the body remains feeling constantly ready for action, leading to a variety of different symptoms which can feel very unpleasant and exhausting. What are the symptoms of breathing pattern disorder? Symptoms of breathing pattern disorder vary widely, but they may include breathlessness. You may experience this when moving, talking, or even when you are resting. You may find that you feel breathless doing activities that previously wouldn't have made you breathless. And you may feel that you are unable to exercise because of this breathlessness. You may find that you have difficulty coordinating breathing with talking or eating. You may experience a sensation of air hunger or feel as though you are unable to take a deep breath. Fatigue. You may experience fatigue and low energy levels because you are using extra muscles which aren't designed to help with breathing when you are resting. Using these extra muscles means that you are using extra energy to breathe and this means that you have less energy for other activities and you may also find that you have difficulty concentrating on tasks. Chest pain. For this reason, you may also find that the muscles of the upper chest become fatigued because they aren't designed to be in constant use, and this can lead to a feeling of chest pain. Muscular aches and tension. This may also lead to these muscles becoming tense, fatigued and twitchy, particularly around the neck, shoulders and jaw, and can lead to pain and discomfort in these areas. Palpitations. One of the symptoms of breathing pattern disorder that can feel scary is palpitations, which can be caused by the chemical imbalance in the blood caused by hyperventilation. Tingling sensations. Tingling in the hands, feet or tip of nose and pins and needles in the hands, arms or around the mouth and lightheadedness can also be caused by reduced levels of carbon dioxide in the blood due to overbreathing. Headaches. We may also experience headaches as a result of both this chemical imbalance and from overuse of muscles in the shoulders and neck in breathing. Cold symptoms. If we are breathing through our mouth instead of our nose, we may experience an irritable cough, a dry mouth or a sore throat. We may also notice that our nose feels blocked. This is because using the nose for breathing maintains an optimal environment within the nasal passages. Dizziness or blurred vision. This is due to the reduced levels of carbon dioxide in the blood. Not everyone feels these symptoms, even if they have a disordered breathing pattern. You may have had non-optimal breathing pattern habits for a long time, but your COVID infection meant that your body could no longer compensate for them, and so now you have become symptomatic. Even athletes have disordered breathing problems and optimising breathing can help to improve their athletic performance. It's important that disordered breathing patterns are identified and improved in order to improve the physical and emotional symptoms caused by them.